<laughs> and welcome, welcome, my friends, to Friday Night Scream. I am so excited for tonight. I just can't wait to share Dorothy with you. And I know so many of you already know about Dorothy, but if you don't, you're in for a treat. And um, Krista's here, Diane, Debbie's here, Mary, Jennifer. Welcome everyone to Friday Night Scrapbooking. It is so great to see you. <clears throat> Amy's here, Rebecca, Ruth, Bobby. Oh, wow. So many folks. Julie. Oh, they're, they're just all... Woohoo! Allie's first time from Santa Cruz. Nice. Got Diane is here, a fellow YouTuber. So we are just going to have so much fun tonight. And if you are new here, if you are new, these are some places that you can find me because I like to do a lot of stuff. I like to have my hands on a lot of cookie jars. So you can find me both on Facebook, on YouTube. I see I've got you guys from both places. Um, I'm also on Instagram. Sometimes I like to do a little something different over there. And then of course, if you are looking for Creative Memories products, I would love to be your advisor if you don't have one. So there you go. Those are the links, the special links. <clears throat> All right, you guys ready? So in case I haven't announced it enough, <laughs> let's welcome Dorothy Guinan from Scrapbooking Quebec. And you guys, I am so excited. When um, we're going to, we're going to join, jump in and I'm going to have Dorothy come on in just a second. But that is our, um, our, our whole night tonight is you are going to scrap live with Dorothy. <laughs> so I'm so excited. But because today is Friday <clears throat> and today is preview Friday, not even just a normal Friday. I also have to tell you uh, just for one minute, I it's a minute and 15 seconds. I have to tell you about what's new and new, the news and what's new. Let's take a look. <laughs> And what do you think? Are you guys excited? Do we get thumbs up for that? Or do we get hearts for that? What do you think? A new, I don't think they've ever done an embellishment buffet. Brand new, just announced today. And all of that new product will be live on Monday. So let me know what you think. I want to see some hearts if you like it. Okay, got a few hearts. <laughs> all right, friends. Without further ado, I already see 
that you are welcoming this very special lady. I'm going to bring her on screen right now. And there she is. <laughs> so I um I don't you know I don't think I told this to Dorothy, <laughs> but I was kind of a fangirl for a long time. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was a fan girl. <laughs> Can we see who's been our fangirls of, of Scrapbooking Quebec for a while? I know you're out there. So the chat will probably, um, yeah. <laughs> Dorothy, yeah, Julie's like, Dorothy, Dorothy, Julie's here. And um, so glad to see you, Cindy says. So um, she, Dorothy, tell us a little bit about yourself and how long have you been scrapbooking? Because that's a, that's a neat one. And then also how long have you had your YouTube channel? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me here, Lauren. Um, can you hear me? This oh, yeah. is really new to me, and I'm really, really nervous. Can you need, can you tell? Not at anyway, all. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. First of all, thank you so much for totally inviting me out of my comfort zone because I'm way outside of my comfort zone, but I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I don't even know where to look on my computer. Anyway, I'm, I'm looking straight ahead. <laughs> but so can you believe it? I have a YouTube channel. Yes. Um, I'm from Nova Scotia. I'm a Canadian and I've been living in Quebec for most of my adult life. And that is why my YouTube channel's name is Scrapbooking Quebec. So I started my YouTube channel in 2018. At this okay. point, there's about, there's a little over 400 videos. Most of them are process videos on my channel. And basically there, it's a place for me to share my absolute passion for memory keeping. So um, what else can I say? I started scrapbooking nearly 20 years ago. That was, uh, I was invited to a creative memories party, like many people. <laughs> so many, right? <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I was very skeptical at the time because I had bought a few scrapbooking items at a local scrapbooking store. And I you know, it wasn't for me. It was way too crafty for me. You know, I didn't have time for that. So my friend invited me to a party. And of course I went, I love my friend. And my mindset completely changed that night. I left there. Scrapbooking wasn't just about being crafty. It really was about telling stories and it was about honestly having an option an opportunity to um to leave a legacy and i say that 100 percent honestly this happened two weeks after my father passed away so that was the first significant loss in my life and at the time i had gone to nova scotia of course for his funeral and I came back to Quebec with a handful of photos and I felt like it was the only thing I really had left of my father, you know, the only tangible thing. So obviously the first page I made, made was about my father. That was 20 years ago. I have about, I haven't counted lately, but I have over 112 by 12 albums. Most of them created <laughs> memories albums. Can we give Dorothy and, a round of applause for that? Yeah, and you know, and they, they yeah. are full of stories. So yeah, so here I am 20 years later and I love scrapbooking as much, you know, if not more. So yeah, I think having photos in albums, physical photos with stories is an amazing gift. You know, really it is, especially nowadays. So that's what and I do. <laughs> that's whole, why I love scrapbooking. That that was really kind of also, you know, cr creative memories. That was their go-to, right? Like it was, oh, yeah. it was really about the stories and, and, you know, preserving those memories. So absolutely, yes. <laughs> They're giving you a lot of thumbs up and applause. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> I think we would all love to have, I, can you guys see behind Dorothy? Look at some of those albums behind her, right? Yeah, but you know, <laughs> they're, in three room, they're in three rooms in, three rooms. in my house. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'll, I'll move over to the song here. All in all, you're going to see a mess. <laughs> yep, yep. So, um, no, I love it. It's great. And um, we, uh, so... 
I we've actually been trying to plan this for a while, right, Dorothy? Like we started last year. And I mm-hmm. said, Oh gosh, you know, Dorothy, I'd love you to, you know, love for you because to me, I think um, it's, you know, it's, you're in my category. I call it elegant simplicity. You know, you're not mm. over the top, but you are so creative. And I love it when you use CM products and, you know, the whole thing. And, and we were just talking well, before we started, Di- um, Dorothy said, yeah. And I get to the point. I go, yeah, I'm a chatter, but Dorothy, <laughs> if you want to binge watch, boy, you could go binge watch and she'll tell you everything right straight to the point. So (laughs) love that. Love that in your videos. So, um, okay. Well, you've got so many fans already saying hello. We decided, hello back. (laughs) (laughs) Um, we decided that, um, well, actually when I saw the painted garden collection, I thought I would love to give this to Dorothy. And, and so she's in Quebec and there is no creative memories in Quebec. So, nope. <laughs> that's a little bit of a, yeah, right. So, I, I just, I thought, okay, I've got to send her, send it to her, but I had to get it to her in enough time, you know, she'd have a chance to play with it and do all that. And um, <laughs> so, is there a Chester sighting tonight? Oh, they already know about Chester, Dorothy. <laughs> that's her cat, right? <laughs> Someone asked, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't he's, he's here. He's, he's here. here, but he's locked <laughs> out, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, we got Dorothy the painted garden. So, in case you didn't read the description, that is this amazing layout that she has done for us. So, since uh, Dorothy is, um, this is a new thing for her doing a live. What? What? what <laughs> blah, blah blah. See. <laughs> What we're going to do is play her video. She already created for us and she's going to talk us through it. So if you have questions, if you want to, you know, just anything that comes up, if you want, I'm going to be monitoring the chat. So I'm not going to be on here. It's going to be Dorothy. And then um, you let me know and I can act as moderator tonight and, uh, and then, you know, feed Dorothy the questions and the info from the chat. So that's our plan. That's our plan. So what do you think? Are you ready, Dorothy? I'm ready. I'm, ready. I'm, I'm seeing a delay. Are you seeing a delay? There's a, there's a little bit of a delay. Um, hopefully yeah, it's, not. It's confusing me a bit right now, but I'll, I'll adapt. Okay. I'll figure it out. All right. Debbie already has a question. I have watched your videos really enjoy them. That's a statement, Deb. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> uh, maybe her question, she's probably typing. Okay, while well, while Debbie does that, I'm I'm gonna do um a screen share. So I have Dorothy's video ready to go. One second here. And let's see. I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna go here and we're gonna make it big. And I don't need to see that. And see, there we go. So, can you, how is it coming? Did you do you see your your beautiful layout, Dorothy? I can see the layout. I can see the layout. It's a sneak peek. I'm it's not a showing sneak you everything peek. right now. It's a sneak peek right now. Head, All right. Okay. So you tell me when to start. And so get going. Um, and remember, I can pause, rewind, and do all that good stuff. So you, all right. Ready? Sounds good. Oh. Sounds good to me. All right. I'm ready. Here we okay, go. Okay. So what? Okay, so what you're seeing right here is a sneak peek of a double page layout. And this is a page design that I have done many, many times. It's very simple. I'll be using five photos, but you can honestly do it with the more photos, less photos, and you'll see that throughout the process. So here's what's on my desk, and I'm showing you I have the five photos. Now, I made sure to have one of them that was larger than the other four, because I like to have one photo that I can reserve as a focal point. And these are photos of me in a garden in Negril, Jamaica, in a hummingbird, hummingbird gardens. So it's perfect for this 
painted garden collection, which is absolutely gorgeous. So I kind of narrowed down my choice here. That's my favorite paper, that floral paper. So what I'm showing you right now are a few picks that I took from the printed paper packs. Now, I'm not going to be using all of these, but I just like to narrow down my choice at the very beginning. I also selected some paper from the tone on tone paper pack. That's what I'm showing you right now. And you can see I've selected some greens. I've selected that burgundy as well as along with the yellow there. So that's what I'm starting with. And you're going to see in a moment, I did pull in a bit of material from my stash. I like to use white paper as my foundation page. So that's what I'm showing you right now. I have two pieces of 12 by 12 white cardstock, and I'm also going to be creating a journaling box. So that's some lined paper from Creative Memories. And you're going to see right now, I'm going to pull out this embellishment tray. So in here, I kind of pre-selected and organized my embellishments a bit. So this collection comes with an embellishment pack. There's like some ephemera pieces. I sort of divided them up, pulled out what I thought I would be using. Again, I'm constantly at this point trying to narrow down my choices. And that embellishment pack also came with those adhesive jewels. And some of them I actually left in the packaging because I knew I wouldn't be using them. Here are some pocket cards. So those I do plan to match some photos with them. And you're going to see in a moment for two of the pocket cards in advance, I actually um, I actually fussy cut them. So this one here has flowers there. I fussy cut them. You can see that I have cut um, some of them. I have fussy cut and some of them were full flowers. Other were partial flowers. And I also have some uh, leaves. You're going to see that in a minute. I'm just checking in with you, Lauren. Can you hear me? Because I'm hearing absolutely nothing. Okay, that's good. You're doing I just great. To... And, and we All have... right. So those are some leaves that I fussy cut as well. Again, another one of the pocket cards. I definitely, I'm not a pocket page scrapbooker, so I like to use the pocket cards for other reasons. Here's a sticker sheet that goes with the collection. So I definitely dig into that later on. Now, Lauren also sent me these really cool layering pieces. She sent me two packages of them. So I'm going to dig into that later on. They're like basic shapes, but they're really nicely embossed. And also from my stash, I have a couple alpha packs. Those are from past Vicky Booten collections. So, of course, I had to bring in some creative memories tools. So I have the uh, border maker system and that's the notebook border cartridge. That one there I love. I wish creative memories would bring it back. They should. Anyway, that's my opinion. <laughs> Same. Thing. Also, that is a scalloped circle punch that I got free with purchase a couple of years ago from creative memories. And I have the jumbo circle here. So now what I'm going to do is toss everything off the desk. And the first thing I'm going to do is start preparing my foundation page. And again, it's going to be very, very simple. Basically, what I'm going to be creating are two borders, one on the far left, one on the far right. And that's going to basically frame my layout. It's going to basically show where my layout starts and where it finishes. So. I'm going to start by finding myself the green tone on tone paper. And I want these borders to be different in size. I want one to be significantly larger than the other. So I'm going to start by slicing this paper at seven inches. Then you'll see in a moment, I'm going to slice the other one just down a little bit at four and a half inches. Now, this will get adjusted later on in the process. Actually, the seven inch one stays as is, but this one here, the four and a half inch one, later on in the process, I trim it down to four inches. But when I create a layout like this, typically I cut larger and then I adjust later because depending on the photos and depending on how I decorate, you know, these things get switched up a bit, even if I'm using the same page design often. <laughs> so I have the green borders and now you see me getting out my um, custom cutting system. I'm, I'm going to get out that jumbo circle. I'm also getting out my 
favorite paper from this collection. I find it absolutely gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is cut out a jumbo circle and I'm going to use the outside rim and I'm going to use the green blade. I think that makes a circle at about 11 and a half inches. My plan with this is to cut it in two. And what I'm going to do is place a semicircle on top of each one of those green borders that I already cut out. So I'm going to have to cut them out unequal. And this, you guys have to realize that this is real time. And typically I do videos in about 15 to 20 minutes. So there's going to be times like right now where I don't have a lot to say because I basically cut out my jumbo circle here. And anyway, you're going to see me come in and I'll cut it. I don't know if you can hear, but Chester's outside my office door. He's meowing his head off, dying to get in here right now. Yeah, we anyway, can he hear him, Dorothy. We oh, can you can hear him. him. He wants, he's saying hello. He wants to jump all over my keyboard and and you know mess everything up i know exactly i know my cat i know what he wants to do <laughs> anyway right. you see me putting this in here and what i'm actually going to do is get out my t-square because i want this semicircle to just fall within those borders so i know one of them is seven inches wide so i'm basically putting my t-square up to six and three quarter inches ish i slice it so I do know as well that the semicircle that goes on the right hand side that will be a bit later on is going to have to be adjusted. Again, these are all just kind of cuts I'm doing now that will all be adjusted a bit later on. And this is how I scrapbook when I'm not scrapbooking on YouTube. This is how I scrapbook when I'm in my own office. Anyway, now I'm getting out my foundation pages and I do this frequently throughout the process because I'm constantly checking. Do I like it? Does it look right? And that's when I'm doing my adjusting. So you can see me now placing my borders on the page and I'm placing the semicircle. So that one looks fine. You're going to notice on the right, the semicircle is a bit large because I did trim down that green paper. So that's going to exceed a little bit there. Anyway, I will be adjusting that later on. Now at this point, I think what I'm going to do here, because I'm, I did this a few days ago, I am going to ink the edges of these papers right now. It's really not necessary. Typically, when I create borders or when I create layered photo mats, I do like to add inking to the edges and I'm not a heavy inker. I don't, you're going to see when I ink it, I'm really just doing the tips, the edges of it. And sometimes when you cut, there's a little bit of white there or something like that. It's just a way for me to make it look like it all kind of, um, I don't know, it just kind of finishes the edges, but you can see I'm barely inking it there. So I'm telling you right now, this is a long process. This is something on YouTube that I would speed right through. So anyway, <laughs> what do you think so far, guys? Do you like it yeah. so far? Do you like this Mary, collection? Mary is saying Chester does not sound happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's, he's not happy. He's outside. He's meowing, but I know he will jump on my keyboard. He'll mess everything up. I love right. Chester. I think that's clear to anybody. <laughs> right. but, uh, you know, Chester's just not invited to this session tonight. I'll, oh. I'll have him on YouTube next week sometime. They're, they're throwing anyway. free Chester. <laughs> free, free, free Chester. Chester. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Anyway, so yeah. Anyway, so yeah, here I am inking away still it kind of takes a long time. And I actually later on in the process, I don't want to spoil anything here. But later on in the process, I do add a bit to these borders. And I don't add ink. And I honestly don't think my inking at this point is doing much to my layout. <laughs> but it's just something that I always do for whatever reason, you know, we all get into these habits scrapbooking that some things just feel right to us. And that's just one of the things that feels right to me. By the way, the ink I'm using, it's Morning Mist by Versifying Claire. It's like this smoky gray. And I'm sitting at my desk right now. And I have probably 80 ink pads sitting right beside me. 
it's taking up room on my table because the only one I use honestly is this one here in a black ink. So I really should right. clean up my desk. Yeah. You know, I should watch some of those organizational scrap room <laughs> videos, but I never seem to get around to actually doing it. So I'm almost done, I promise. And when I get this done, what I will be doing, I think, is once again, placing it all on the foundation page. Like I said, I constantly go back to that because that's the only way I can see as a scrapbooker where I'm heading. So it often looks like I'm just kind of repeating the same steps over and over again. I don't know. Do you guys do that when you scrapbook? Constantly check in with yourself? Oh, all the time. I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's what it's like. So it's it's kind of funny for me to be watching myself in real time here. I'm, I hope it's not too painful for you guys anyway. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> you know what sometimes I found I do too, Dorothy, is like I'll be scrapbooking, like, you know, looking down at my page. I'm going to ask if you do this too. And then I'll look up at the screen and go, do I like it on the screen? <laughs> Oh, definitely. Definitely. I I will have an example of that. Not very soon, actually, yeah. because sometimes I, I look at it, it doesn't look right. And then I look at it on the screen. I'm, it doesn't look that bad. Why did I do that? Right. Anyway, I can see I'm doing something in the process. Now you see me tossing those circles towards the top and towards the bottom. I have done this process, this design before where I've centered the circles and I like it. And I've also done it where I've moved the semicircles towards the top of one border and towards the bottom of another border. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Now, typically when I make this page design, which is really, really simple, I create a diagonal page design. And what I mean by that is I use two embellishment clusters, not three. And one is typically in the top left corner and the other in the bottom right corner. So by positioning these semicircles towards the top and bottom of the borders, essentially I am starting the first layer of my embellishment clusters. And I'm going to be talking about that later on because I do create two significant embellishment clusters. Uh oh, hang on a sec. Can you, I'm sorry, I paused the video there. Anyway, I will be creating two significant embellishment clusters and I always start with a base layer. So these semicircles are actually serving as a base, lay, base layer to my future embellishment clusters. Now you can see the border that's going to be on the right, the uh, paper is overlapping so I want to trim that down but I'm realizing at this point that it's too long because it's overlapping at the bottom so I'm getting out my other trimmer here and I'm just going to trim the bottom part the part that is uh, overlapping at the bottom and I'm going to do that for the left border as well and then of course I'm going to have to come in and trim that right right border because you can see the semicircle is uh, too large for the border. So when I trim the more narrow border, this one that I'm about to do, I end up trimming it down to four inches here. So right now, the border that's gonna go on the left page is seven inches wide. And this border on the right page is just a hair shorter than four inches. I meant to do it at four inches, but I accidentally cut it a little bit too small. Anyway, no big deal there. And you can see I'm just kind of coming in. I'm always checking to make sure everything is straight and measuring. I'm kind of obsessed with my ruler. I don't know if anyone's noticed that if you watch my channel, but you know, it's right. true. So <laughs> the so T-square. Once, once, oh yeah, I love them. I've got several. I've got like I've got eight beside me. So I'm placing my borders once again. But here what I want to do is I want to add just a little border along the green borders, just on the inside, a little contrast. So oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. What I want to do right now is show you where I'm going with this. So I have five photos and the idea with this page design is just basically once you have your borders in place to bounce photos in a straight line up and down across the two pages so that's what i'm doing right now so i have three uh, portrait 
photos and two landscape photos. Really, this doesn't matter. You can have more photos, just have them smaller, or you can have less photos and have them larger. It's as simple as that. So what I want to do right now is find mats for my photos. So I'm digging into those pocket cards there and I want to mat it in that burgundy color. So that one there has the watercolor. I'm kind of, um, I like things all to be the same. Like I like my photo mats. It's just me. I like them to all be the same color. So I'm looking for them all in the same color. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm covering up journaling cards and stuff like that. I'm just making sure that I can do it because my photos, I have one four by six and the others are three and a half by five. Now for the two landscape photos over on the left, I will end up cutting into the tone on tone paper because the uh, pocket cards aren't big enough. I think what I'm going to do right now, I'm always having to anticipate what I'm going to do next here. I'm going to actually mat these photos right now. Now, for me, when I mat my photos, I like them one quarter inch larger than the photos. That's just my style. And normally, what I would do if I had a four by six photo, I'd just simply cut a piece of paper four and a half, I mean, four and a quarter by six and a quarter. But because I'm using these pocket cards and I really want to cover up that white spot in the middle, I'm adhering my photos first. So I'm going about creating my mats a bit differently. So I cover up the white part in the middle. And now you see me putting the photo in the trimmer. But if you look when I open the trimmer right at the bottom, I'm kind of putting my finger Along the transparent guide that you see at the bottom, there's on the right edge of that, it's a straight edge. So what I'm doing, you'll see it in a moment again, I'm just position my photo so that it's bumped right up along that straight edge and then I slice. And I do that on all four sides. So that gives me equal distance around all four sides. This is not normally how I cut my photo mats, but because I have these pocket cards, I want to use them and they are perfect. So that's why I'm doing it this way. But when I cut my photo mats for the um, for the two landscape photos out of the paper, you'll see it how I typically do when I cut my photo mats. Again, this is really long and this is one of the few spots in the video where I actually sped it up two times. So it took me 16 minutes, I think, to map these photos. So it's <laughs> painfully long. That is why I like to speed things up sometimes. So, you know, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, ask away. <laughs> Anyway, I'm almost done here for this part. And you know, you can see I have to do all this stuff first because I definitely do the um, embellishing at the end. All of these steps have to come first. So here I go, I'm gonna be creating a mat and I'm going to be matting these two landscape photos on the same photo mat. So I know right off the bat, the width of those photos are five inches. So I'm cutting it at five and a quarter inches. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to place my photos on top of this mat and then I'm going to come in with a pencil and I'm just going to make a little mark there and um, that'll give me an idea where to uh, cut. I cut it and you're going to see as well when I place my photos on there, I made it a little bit too big. Again, when I cut, I always err on the side of cutting a little bit bigger. That way I can trim it down. It's a lot easier to trim down paper than it is to, you know, stretch it. There are tricks you can do, but uh, it's it's nice when you don't have to do that. Anyway, I'm going to have a drink right now because I'm getting a little bit, uh, I, I'm talking a lot. I love it. I love it. I think it's so, so. It, I think it's so fun to see you know, everyone has their own process. And, um, you know, I, I I like to see you do your photos kind of up on the front end. And sometimes the photos for me are all, are like the last thing I do. Really? Yeah. You're kidding. Really? I mean, wow. I, I, I kind of get my base page set up and then add the photos. I mean, I know which ones I'm going to use, but um, yeah, sometimes there's Isn't a lot. Isn't that funny? 
Yeah. I guess we all have our own way, you know, yeah. and when you've been doing it a long time, and I'm sure you have been too, Lauren, how long have you been scrapbooking, Lauren? Yeah, uh, a, a good 20, oh, 30 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so we kind of get set in our ways, I guess. <laughs> right. Anyway, you can see what my photos look like, bounced up yeah. and down across the two pages. So here is where I'm coming in, and I'm going to want to add borders just to my borders, right? A little narrow strip. Now, when I started this project, I thought I wanted to use that striped paper. And this is a perfect example. I see it on the screen and I like it, but in person, it just didn't look right to me. I flipped over the paper. I definitely prefer the yellow, but I didn't want to use that paper because that's one of the printed papers and it's beautiful. So what I did was I dug in and I found the yellow paper that was in the tone on tone paper pack, and I'm going to cut myself two strips of paper. Now I'm going to cut these each at one inch wide, so 12 inches long, but I will be overlapping when I adhere them to the border. And I do that all the time. So basically what you're going to see of this narrow yellow strip is just one quarter inch. And there's another thing here. I went and inked up all of those other pieces, which to me is just a habit. But I purposefully did not ink this yellow paper here because the ink I was using was a smoky gray and I did not want to have gray ink on that yellow paper. And it was at this point I was telling myself, why did you even bother inking in the first place? But anyway, <laughs> that's part of the game, I think, right? So here I am, believe it or not, you are gonna see me move this. This is crazy. I put it all down. It was straight. Here I am removing it. And guess for how much? One sixteenth of an inch. Okay. <laughs> don't ask. All right. I don't do it to the second one, but hey, it's a miracle that I did this double page spread in one hour and three minutes. That's all I can say. Trust me. It does. It, it does get done. You're not going to be here all night watching me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, here I go once again, adhering on the other side there. This one goes a little bit smoother. So what I will do at this point is I'm going to adhere those borders to both sides of the page. I will be keeping the photos separate for a little while. I often do that because I want to um, play around with placement of title and journaling box and all that kind of stuff. So. I'm going to adhere these down. This again is a kind of a slow period. I'm going to be um, taking a while to adhere these down, even though it's a pretty easy job to adhere them down. What you actually see me doing there now, you see that little yellow bit that's overhanging? I don't know why that is. Those are 12 inches long. I probably didn't quite adhere it properly. So instead of removing everything, um, I just sliced it from the bottom. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been using my multi-purpose tool all night. Have you noticed that? Which I, is the, oh, no. You know, do you know that multi-purpose tool? Yeah. Is that what you call it from yeah. Creative Memories? Uh -huh. You know, I'm, I'm a former Creative Memories consultant, you know. I was a Creative Memories consultant back in, I think, in 2005 for a few years until they left Quebec. Anyway, yeah. so... I became, you know, I guess multi-purpose tools back then, I was, I absolutely needed one. And I have three beside me right now. I cannot live without my multi-purpose oh. tool. I'm constantly <laughs> lifting things yep. and all of that. Even though I can't get Creative Memories material here in Quebec, I do have it shipped to my home province in Nova Scotia about once a year. And that's when I, I get my albums and my pages and all of that delivered to my sister's place. And then I, either she brings them here or I go and pick them up. <laughs> mm. So yeah, so that's why I have so many Creative Memories albums. Anyway, you can see everything is adhered down and believe it or not, here I go with my multi-purpose tool. I'm lifting it up. You <laughs> yes. don't see it on the screen, yeah. but there's an absolute minuscule piece of white cardstock on the um, other side of that border there. And I was trying to cover that up. So here I go, ready with my photos once again. I think 
I'm not quite finished setting up my foundation page at this point. I am going to be getting out some tools here. The tools that I showed you at the beginning of this process. I have the border maker system along with that, um, uh, that circular punch. And what I was just showing you there was I was pointing out the top left and bottom right corners again where I will be embellishing a bit later on so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this paper it is from the printed paper pack the side that I'm going to be using is that kind of tone on tone it almost looks like um dandelions that are blowing in the wind it I am going to cut yeah it does yeah <laughs> and you know what I'm going to do with that I am cutting out two six inch squares i don't know do any of you have that circular scalloped punch or oh, one of those circle punches one of my uh, favorites one I, of why my don't favorite. they why doesn't creative memories have them now honestly <laughs> at one point this is the only one i have i got it free with purchase a few years ago one of those killer creative memories deals where you could get like a free album and punch and paper with i don't know 170 dollars right. worth of product something like that Anyway, I absolutely love it. So what I, I'm doing here is I cut that six inch square and what I'm doing is there's there's a guide at the bottom. So you kind of line up the square at the bottom of that guide and you punch all four corners. Then you flip it around because you can see there's four more corners there and then you do the very same thing. This takes moments and out pops this unbelievable perfect scalloped circle yeah. i absolutely it's just gorgeous it's gorgeous it's gorgeous <laughs> once i thought i broke this i was in a panic um i don't know what <laughs> happened i think it kind of bunched up when i first got it i think i used it on every page for like three months or something i absolutely <laughs> it was ridiculous i loved it anyway you can see i am doing it again and these make perfect bases for embellishment clusters. So already for my embellishment clusters, for my diagonal design, I have the jumbo semicircle. Now I'm going to have these scalloped six inch circles. So if you want to do what I'm doing and you don't, you are unfortunate and you don't have this punch. I'm sorry if you don't have it. It's so beautiful. But you can use a circle or you can use a big doily or whatever you want, something round or something big. Anyway, you're going to see what I do with those in a minute. But before I actually place them, what I'm going to do is punch out a journaling box. So you're going to see me get out my trimmer and I'm going to get out that lined paper from Creative Memories. It's great to create journaling boxes. I'm going to cut myself out a piece at three and three quarter inches. So I'm just guesstimating here and I'm going to be cutting it out at 12 inches long. It seems to be kind of long right now, but you'll see me do it in a minute. And then what I will do is get out that border punch and just make myself a notebook border for this. So there I go, trimming it down. It's a kind of a slow part again. Any questions? I know you're going to make everybody want the notebook cartridge, just like you are having everybody's drooling over the doily punch. Too. Really? No, it's beautiful. I, I can't believe Creative Memories doesn't have it. They should, you yeah. know hire me as some kind of product advisor. I'd be, right. I'd be a great one for them. <laughs> anyway, so here I go, cutting out that notebook border punch. You know, um, I've done this, made a notebook border before without this notebook border punch. You basically just take a hole punch, kind of punch it down the side with a regular old hole punch. Then you make little slices into the circles and then you cut it. I don't know if that made any sense at all. Yes, but you that's can, a great tip. You can kind yes. of mimic it if you do right. not have it. But the border punch is excellent. Anyway, I have this at 12 inches long now. It's too long for what I want. So I am going to trim it down and I trim it down to in and about seven inches. And once what I will do with the other piece is I'm just going to put it back in the bag with my lined paper because I'm going to use that obviously mm -hmm. on another page. For some strange reason, when I use that notebook border punch, that side that I'm trimming right now was never 
quite straight. And, you know, I'm kind of obsessed with things being straight. So I put it in my trimmer and, and <laughs> sliced it off a little bit. I could have ruffled it up and you wouldn't have noticed. But anyway, that's always what I do. Now I'm going to show you where I'm going to place these pieces that I just punched out. So you're going to see I am going to incorporate that journaling box within that bouncy row of photos. And again, this is part of the design. I've done it many times before with different numbers and different sizes of photos. It comes together very, very quickly. Also, what I'm going to do is place those scalloped circles, one in the top left, which is what I consider the beginning of a layout, and one in the bottom right. That's where I'm placing it right now. And even though that's kind of a white tone on tone paper on white, it still adds texture and interest, I find anyway, to the layout. Now it's actually gonna serve more of a purpose at the top left because it's creating a contrast between the photos and that beautiful floral paper that's underneath it. Now I have my foundation page in place. I've got my photos placed. I've got my journaling box in place. So the next important thing for me when I scrapbook is the title. So I'm pulling out these alphas here. They're from Vicki Booten's Sweet Rush collection. And for some strange reason, I ended up with three of them in my stash. And these are a few years old. And I must say, if any of you have these hanging around and you have this painted garden collection, I find them perfect with it because they're very neutral. But if you look at them, there's a little fine line of green and burgundy and yellow. So I'm quite thrilled. I plan to use them all up with this painted garden collection. So you can see my title where I'm placing it, Barney's Garden, Negril. So that's in Negril, Jamaica. Now it's being, it's being placed there for a reason. It's kind of reinforcing that border on the right, but it's also framing my focal point photo. Now you can see I put the year 2023 on the opposite page. And often when I create this design, I have the main part of the title on one page. Sometimes it's just in the cluster. In this case, I separated it. And I always have a repetition of that title in the opposite corner. So that's why I have 2023 there. So now it's time to get out my embellishing. So what I'm going to do right now is just kind of organize my embellishing a bit. I have this tray in front of me and I'm going to, I'm right now just getting myself set up to embellish. So I have the stickers up there in the top right. I'm putting some wax paper there for a bit later on. Also right now, I'm going to take my embellishments. Now I've already kind of made a selection, but I'm actually going to continue making my selection. I'm going to remove some of the items. I do find it easier to reduce my choices as I go. I just find it makes it go quicker. So some of these you're going to see I put back in my tray. Everybody asks me about this tray, by the way. It came from Dollarama from the cosmetic section and it cost me four dollars so i get that question all the time on my youtube channel and, and you anyway that question again dorothy you did <laughs> <laughs> where did you oh, i could <laughs> anticipate that one anyway you can see i'm making a pile of yellow flowers other flowers leaves so i'm just organizing myself because when i go to embellish I'm going to want to do, okay, I want a yellow flower here and I want a yellow flower in the opposite corner. So it's just a way for me to easily create repetition in both of my embellishment clusters. So in a moment, you're going to see I lose some footage. When I was filming this, I don't know what happened. My, my camera kind of turned off on me. So you don't miss much, but I will explain it to you in a moment when this uh, footage just, um, actually, I might be jumping ahead of myself right now. I actually am. I'm showing you right now. Those are the layering pieces from your shop there. So I've selected a few of those. I just put those jewels back in the tray. And now I think it's now that I'm about to lose some footage. And what you're going to see is my desk suddenly is all messed up. There you go. I'm all messed up. I knew it was coming. So what I did 
off camera here, what you didn't see me do is I selected some of those stickers and I put them on wax paper. So if you look in the top right corner, there's like this pile of wax paper and stickers. And I also started playing around with my embellishments and then I kind of gave up, tossed them to the side, but don't worry, you're gonna see that part, believe me, in slow detail when I build that embellishment <laughs> cluster again and uh, adhere it to the page. So right now, I'm adhering my title on top of the photo. And so I started by adhering that chipboard word garden right on top of the focal point photo. And I'm starting at the end of the word. That's because I want the word to end at the border. And then what I'm doing is I'm building up. So I'm putting the word Barney's right on top of that right now. And this takes quite a bit of time. What I do want to say about this is these are chipboard letters and chipboard typically doesn't adhere well. And I'm fully aware of this, but I'm thinking for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to adhere it and I'm going to come in later and add some other adhesive to it. And I do this for a while, a little bit later in the process, you're gonna see I have to like stop everything and adhere my title because it's falling apart all over the place. So in addition to it being chipboard, which doesn't adhere very well, this is a few years old. So it's just, it's not adhering well. Having like said, I really do like the title, so I'm quite happy about it. This part's kind of long too. So I'm adhering this. And, and Dorothy, then what, someone someone asked um, what your you put your title on. That's wax paper, also, right? Yes, the title is on wax paper. I definitely use wax paper a lot. Just honestly, when I was doing this video, when I was preparing it, I had my title on wax paper, and my original thought when I did it was I thought I was going to be putting my title, the main part of the title, in the bottom right, and then the repetition that I talked about earlier, the year, in the top left. But when I had it on wax paper, I started, I, the first thing I did was position it where I'm adhering it right now, and it turned out that I really liked it that way, so I left it that way. So just just by placing it on wax paper, it kind of gives you the opportunity to play around with placement a bit. And, you know, I'm going to talk about mm -hmm. um, adhering titles on top of photos as well when I do the other page, because it's typically something I do not do. I mean, photo purist. So <laughs> I'll talk about that later on. Anyway, there's sometimes when I permit myself to do it. What you just saw me adhere now was one of your layering pieces. You can kind of see I tucked it in the bottom right hand corner of my photo. Now I'm placing still on wax paper the word Negril on top of it. And now what you see me doing is just kind of coming in with my other embellishments. Um, I just want to talk about the layering piece that I used, the one that came from your shop, because when I started doing it, I had the idea of finding one that would fully fit the word Negril. But then what I, I changed my mind, because often when I build embellishment clusters, and I'm doing this all over the place right here, is I stagger all of the elements. So if you can see that layering piece, even though initially I thought, wow, I should have that fit my entire word, just by playing around with it quickly, I realized, hey, no, I like it that it's staggered. It does add interest to embellishment clusters, I find, when pieces are staggered, so they're not kind of all lined up and now you saw i came in with the bigger flower that was one of the uh, ones that i fussy cut i tucked one of the ones that was fussy cut it was only half a flower underneath the photo and i'm starting with the flowers and now i'm coming in with some leaves so you saw me just tuck in one leaf there that has a ladybug on it at this point i'm adhering and i'm also when i'm adhering the leaves you may notice i'm just putting adhesive at the base of the leaves where it tucks underneath the flowers that's because later on i'm going to come in with a little bit of foam adhesive and pop up the tips of these leaves so i'm just giving myself that opportunity now it's adhered there but i will come in with other adhesive later on 
And also one of those flowers I popped up on foam adhesive. Now the foam adhesive I'm using is really thin. I'm not into super thick foam adhesive. Because I've been scrapbooking for 20 years, I just can't have really thick pages, but I still like to have a bit of dimension. So the foam adhesive I'm using is from Stampin' Up and it's not very thick. So um, I don't mind putting a little bit of that on. Anyway, I am continuing flowers. You can see me tucking them in. And when I create embellishment clusters with flowers and leaves, and I have to say those are among my favorites, I always liken it to building a bouquet of flowers in a vase in your home. You start with the bigger flowers, come in with smaller flowers, and then you start tucking in the empty spots with leaves. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going to be continuing this for a while with the flowers and leaves. And you can even see that tiny piece that I just put underneath that layering piece. It's absolutely minuscule. It was one of the ones that I fussy cut from the um, pocket card. I just want a hint of that yellow sticking out. So I am using all of those pieces that I fussy cut from that one tiny pocket card. And then what I will do is come, yes? Dorothy, you know what? I just have to say, like, a uh, brilliant idea. <laughs> because sometimes, you know, I want more leaves or I want, you know, different oh. shapes. And I did not even think to fussy cut from the mat card, the mat pack. Well, so I, I'm telling beautiful. you, I am... I do not fussy, I'm not a fussy cutter. I'm not one of these amazing people who fussy cut. As a matter of fact, the thought of fussy cutting, typically I recoil. I do not like it, <laughs> but, but, so if ever you see me fussy cut something, it's because it's incredibly easy. And so what I can mm -hmm. tell you about the leaves and the flowers that I cut, they were really, really easy. And if you look at the leaves that I fussy cut, if you look at the card, there's little grooves along the leaves. Now, forget it. I did not cut out those little <laughs> grooves. I just zip, 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 zip. Right? <laughs> Yeah, just no way was I going to do that. Okay. And, but the thing is, because the leaves have an impression on top of them, they have texture already. And I think mm. personally, they look fine. So I got a lot of leaves and flowers from those two little cards. Perfect. Anyway, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it really kind of expanded the amount of leaves. For example, well, for the flowers that are in both of my clusters, um, I just want to point out something here with my my ruler. I am just making sure that the word Negril lines up with Barney's garden at top there. I'm just really want to make sure that that border is reinforced there. But with regards to fussy cutting those pocket cards, all for the yellow flowers, I use the sticker sheets. For the leaves, I use the sticker. Uh, well, for the yellow flowers, I'm sorry, the sticker sheet as well as the fussy cut flowers mm -hmm. and for the leaves i use the embellishment pack the stickers and the fussy cut leaves so it really gave me a lot of them and it really expanded my embellishments basically just by cutting out right, two right. pocket cards so that's great now this cluster once i get the word negril down is almost finished for now and i say that because I will get most of my embellishment cluster down. And then what I'm going to do is work on the left page. And then I'm going to come back and finish. I'm going to be adding some um, stickers and smaller elements in this embellishment cluster that I'm working on now. But I wait to do that until the end. There's another thing I did here. I knew where my embellishment clusters were going to go. I knew I was going to be creating a diagonal design. So I'm just working on one embellishment cluster now here over on the right hand page. And then I'm going to go to the left hand page. I'm going to work in the kitty corner and I'm going to be repeating, of course, the colors and the images, but the clusters will look different. And I always make sure to make these clusters different sizes. The one that I'm working on now will be bigger than the one that I will be creating in a moment on the left-hand page. 
Anyway, so any questions? <laughs> They're just, it looks amazing. Such fun. So very okay. funny. Love it. Okay. And okay. I'm just well, like, I'm uh, gonna... yeah, I love all the different sizes and shapes and good job using the pocket cards. I'm just like, yeah, why, the... why don't you think of these things? <laughs> oh, well, now you will. But anyway, <laughs> looks great. So I think what I'm going to be doing now is moving over to the left hand page there. So of course, absolutely nothing is adhered right now. And what you're going to see me do is play around for quite a bit of time with placement here. So I'm going to be kind of moving up and down the photos. Then what I will do is start building my embellishment cluster as well. I play around with that. And this is exactly how I scrapbook. So what I'm going to be doing is playing around with it. Then I move everything to the side. Then I build it again. And I'm basically repeating myself twice. So I guess I'm getting an idea of where I'm going to be placing things um, before I go about it the second time there. But right now you're going to see me playing around quite a bit. You know, it's really funny because this is this layout took me a little over an hour to do for a double page spread, which I mean, really, that's not long, right? But it no. seems like when I'm watching myself, it feels like taking forever here. I hope I'm not boring you guys. <laughs> it's so anyway. fun to watch. It's so fun. Okay. Well, anyway, so you can see I've kind of placed everything here. I'm going to come in once again, starting with those yellow flowers. And you'll notice, you know, a lot of them are just partial flowers because, of course, I cut them out from the edges of that pocket card. So what I just end up doing is trying to hide those cut edges but it's certainly easy enough to do when you're creating embellishment clusters because you're overlapping a lot all along the way there so i'm starting with that yellow one at the top one of the stickers that i really want to use and you'll see it in a moment there is a bird's nest with hummingbirds in it and this garden where i'm at barney's garden is a hummingbird garden basically you go there and they give you a little little bottle with probably sugar and water in it and you hang around with this little bottle and you hold it up and hummingbirds come and they feed right out of your hand the handheld bottle oh, it's a really cool, my goodness that's it's a really amazing cool, yeah and it's a really cool <laughs> feeling when they do it because you know you can kind of feel them they're pressing at yeah. this bottle it's very very neat anyway so that's why i really wanted that bird's nest and there you can see it's there and it's on wax paper and now i'm doing that so that i can play around with placement of these stickers because you know you can see i'm overlapping a lot right so i want an idea of how this is going to look so i'm coming in with some of the flowers and i have a lot of indecision with this particular embellishment cluster and i honestly think it's because of the wax paper so as much as i like placing my stickers on wax paper because it does permit me to move things around it becomes a little bit cumbersome too because you can't really see how your embellishment cluster is going to look because you have this wax paper there right and <laughs> typically you don't want wax paper in your embellishment cluster so you know that part doesn't look nice but yeah it's kind of a it's kind of the um you know, the price you have to pay for putting it on wax paper and playing with placement, I guess. Anyway, I fuss around quite a bit with this. And in a moment, I'm not quite sure when I do it, there is a sun in the embellishment pack. And I have it in my brain that I'm thinking. I think I just put my finger up there. Anyway, am I going for the sun? I'm not quite sure. Almost. Almost. Almost going for the sun. <laughs> anyway, I'm thinking. Oh, I, can, I can tell you what I'm thinking. So I'm sticking these leaves in. I'm happy with that. But I do decide <clears throat> I want to put my sun up there because I'm thinking, hey, the sun is up. It's up in the sky. That makes sense. So my brain is telling me to put the sun there. And of course, I'm just digging into this beautiful painted garden collection, right? So all my options are there. That's, that's always a problem too, right? Because I want to use absolutely everything. So I end up 
you will see it in a moment, still playing around with placement here. I end up actually adhering that sun. I might be way ahead of myself here at this point. I'm very, very sorry if I am. I keep seeing me putting my finger up. So obviously I'm thinking of something. Okay, back to what I'm doing here. You see me there with a pencil. At this point, I'm deciding I've got way too many loose pieces on my desk. I don't particularly like how the embellishment cluster is looking at this point. So I figured it's time to just simply adhere my photos and my journaling box. And then I'll get back to that embellishment cluster a little bit later on. So now what you're going to see me doing is I am going to start adhering from the left to the right. And you're going to see I have a lot of overlapping. Now, there's something I want to say about that because I don't mind overlapping, but I do not like putting adhesive on top of photos. And the reason why is I never know if I have to go in and get that photo <laughs> later on. And I have had to do that before. So you see that grouping of two photos, the two landscape photos there? I am going to eventually adhere that to the page. So that's gonna be straight on the page. But when I go to adhere that journaling box, take note of where I'm putting my adhesive. I'm gonna be putting it over on the far right. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want to put adhesive on top of my photo. So I don't mind overlapping, but I do not like adhesive on top of the photos. And you're gonna see later on, I do plan to put the year 2023 on top of the photos. And I do that judiciously. I almost never do that. The only, in that, the only time I really adhere on top of photos is when it's a landscape photo. If it's, a, you know, a, a beach or I don't know, a mountainscape or something like that. Or I do it on top of Chester photos. I hope Chester's not listening right now, but I definitely <laughs> do it. On, I do it on top of Chester photos, too. But when it's when there are people, I do not do it. In this case, there is me holding a little that's my back there and you can see me with a knapsack and a baseball hat on i do break my rule and put the 2023 on top of that photo but i don't find it a particularly great photo um the photo beneath it it's me much smaller but if you look closer at that photo i actually have a hummingbird feeding from my bottle in that one the one on top is just me holding the bottle hoping that a hummingbird will show up and feed from my bottle. So I'm not, I don't consider it a great photo, I guess is what I'm saying. But mostly for me, if I'm going to adhere on top of a photo, it's because there are no people in it. And that's just my rule. I know for some people it, it doesn't bother them, but for me it does. And I think it's because in the past I've had to go into albums and retrieve photos for various reasons. And I just don't want there to be adhe adhesive on top of it. Even though for every one of these photos, I can get a copy of it. I don't know. I guess that's just the way I am with photos. It looks really good, Dorothy. I love that you did that there. Like okay. you said, the repeating, so, repeating your element looks great. Okay. You saw there, I brought out some liquid glue. I actually stopped my film there and went and <coughs> adhered my title down properly because the, it started falling off on the right-hand page and I just couldn't continue with it falling off. So now what I'm gonna do is bite the bullet and actually start creating this cluster on the left-hand page there. So you see me coming in with a partial flower. I'm tucking it in behind the photo. Now I'm coming in with that, um, with that sticker. I think the wax paper is still on it. I'm not quite sure. I'm not seeing that well right now. Anyway, I guess it's not. But when I am adhering these clusters, I can tell you, I am not pressing down really hard when I'm adhering them because I know myself, I change my mind a lot. So I'm going to be moving around these things. Oh, here I go, removing the wax paper. But again, I'm putting this sticker down, but I am not going to press 
really, really hard at this point because I'm going to want to put some things underneath it and I may want to move it. Here I go with the sun. There so you are. At this point, <laughs> there I go. But you know, I honestly, when I was mentioning it earlier, it was in my head. I'm thinking, yeah, the sun goes in the sky. I'm going to put it up there. So this one stays here for a little while and I continue embellishing. I'm going to kind of work on the other areas of this embellishment cluster and I'm going to keep um, adhering. But you're going to see me switch things around a lot. You're going to see me switch around the flowers. I'm going to be switching around the leaves. These are minor details, but this is exactly how I built an embellishment cluster. I'm changing my mind all the time. I don't know when you guys are building embellishment clusters do you just kind of go for it or do you change your mind a lot <laughs> i change my mind all the time so you saw there i removed the sun i put i had i had some adhesive on it by the way i will not throw it out that will go on wax paper back in my embellishment pack i actually adhered the smaller one there now i'm going to be tucking that in behind that bird's nest there that stays there for a while, but again, later on, you're going to see that I remove it. But there's one thing I can say, and it's a weird thing to teach. When I've been doing this for 20 years, and you have to follow your gut feeling when you're doing this. And there's two things, actually. Number one, you got to try things because if you do not try things, you will never know if you like it or not. And sometimes mm -hmm. you don't like it. Sometimes you really like it. And sometimes you may ruin something. That's a, that's a risk as well. But as far as I'm concerned, that is part of the creative process. And that's how you end up with, with, pages and with embellishment clusters that you really love it's by trying things it's also by following your gut feeling there's no rule as far as i'm concerned to creating embellishment clusters there's some basic ones you know start with the bigger pieces come in with the smaller pieces overlap add a bit of foam adhesive all of that works but in the end it really comes down to your gut feeling and i'm going to go back to the sun there the sun in my brain made total sense. It's up in the sky behind that bird's nest. It all made sense. I'm in the grill, Jamaica. It's very sunny there, but I didn't like it. Even though my brain was telling me it made sense and I liked the idea of it there, my gut was telling me I didn't like it. I felt like the yellow sun was competing with my yellow flowers, which I really loved. So finally, that's why I removed my son. But it came down to gut feeling, no rules, nothing I could read in a book, just how I felt. And I think prior to doing YouTube, I was doing things on a professional level in the scrapbooking world, giving classes, organizing workshops and all of that for many, many years. And I used to always tell people there's nothing right. There's nothing wrong. It's in your gut. Either you like it or you don't. It was kind of like walking into a room and, and liking the decor or you don't. That's, it's the same thing on a scrapbooking page, I think. Now you can see I am creating some finishing touches here. So I'm coming in with some of the stickers and I really want to tuck in that um, little bird's nest there on the right hand side. You see, I've got it kind of tucked in the flower there. I've got that garden stake. Those are both from the sticker sheet. I find that really, really cute. These are all going to be moved around a little bit there. You also see on wax paper, I have a little hummingbird. I put that down as well. I'm just tucking that bird's nest a little bit further in behind that flower there. And I end up putting that birds, that little hummingbird there. I end up popping it up on foam adhesive. And that you're going to see at the very end ends up being removed. I end up putting um, the hummingbird somewhere else on the page. Again, these are just details and that's what it's like for me when I'm creating embellishment clusters and doing the kind of 
final touches. For some reason, I look at it, I don't like it. And it's another example. I'm looking at it on the screen. I like the hummingbird there on the screen, but in person, it just didn't look right to me. Now I'm coming in. I think what I'm going to be doing here is adding some leaves. Yeah, I'm just, I have a few extra of those little, um, fussy cut leaves there. So I'm just tucking them in. And I'm also adding a little bit of foam adhesive behind many of those leaves. So if you recall, I put some adhesive at the base of those leaves, but not at the tips of those leaves. So at the tips, I'm just adding a little bit of lift by adding a little bit of foam adhesive there. It just adds some texture and interest I find within the embellishment clusters and especially in this case because those floral clusters are sitting more or less on top of that floral paper so in person with a bit of lift you really see the difference in them so I am getting pretty close to the end here I'm just adding a few of those um you know, a few more of those uh, foam adhesive pieces. And what I want to do right now is repeat that layering piece that you see at the bottom underneath the word Negril. I got another one of those. I just cut it in half because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it as a tab there. So I'm going to place it there in the top. You can see me doing it right now in between the photo and the photo mat there. And then what I will do is I'm going to get out my stickers and find myself a little word. And one of the words says bird watching. So that's, that's perfect. So I'm just going to stick it in there. And like I mentioned, I'm sticking it between the photo and the photo mat. And that is another thing I do when I create clusters, I like to work within different layers, some of them behind the photo, some of them behind the photo mat. And that's exactly what I did with that tab there. I'm thinking at this point, I want something up by Barney's garden there, but I'm not quite sure what, and you're going to see here is the completed layout. You see the journaling there. I did have to change my journaling paper because I wrote out my original journaling and I wasn't able to get my entire story down. So I ended up switching that up a bit. And I also ended up, you'll see that in a moment, I added a hummingbird up by Barney's garden. But that's basically it, folks. So I don't know. What do you think? It's a pretty easy layout. Ooh. I hope you enjoy <laughs> the process. Can we give anyway. Dorothy some love on the chat, my friends, and just tell her <laughs> like how amazing that is, isn't it? So here they come. Well, I hope okay. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, yep, here it comes. You, I hope you can see that. They are so thrilled with this layout. And oh, wow. I'm, I'm going to leave happy. it up. I want to leave it up on the screen for just a minute just to, oh, I guess sure. I forgot to hold on. <laughs> and YouTube is telling me, no, Lauren, you're going to switch out of that. Let me come back to you. Dorothy, I'm going to bring you back. Sure. Here we go with us together. Woohoo! Look at that. Yeah. All the chats. Um, Rietta was saying creating an embellishment cluster is the most difficult thing for her to do. I do play <laughs> continually change it. I feel that I never finish it off. Well, I think watching Dorothy's process, didn't that help? Because we learn from watching, right? We learn from a, a expert i'm going to call you an expert from oh. <laughs> from you you are a cluster expert <laughs> and uh yeah and and you can kind of see oh as you go through the process yeah look at here and i love dorothy's advice did you guys take that to heart trust your gut trust your gut and that i i feel that too it's almost like a piece of like finally, when you get the right piece in the right place, it, it's like you can go, <gasps> <laughs> right? It's a settling, it feels settled and it feels calm almost. So, oh my goodness. I hope you can read all those comments, Dorothy. They're, I'm, they're I'm flying, actually, I'm going to read they're them flying later by. because I'm afraid <laughs> I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get overwhelmed and I, 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 I as you know, I've never done this before, so I'm kind of, um, it's different for me. Yes. And especially if I'm, I'm looking at the delay on the screen, it's really weird for me. Right. 
<laughs> I know, I know, I know. I was watching my phone because I couldn't see it. I couldn't see the comments when um, I had it full screened, but everyone is saying watching you helped so much. Um, oh, trust well, your I'm gut. happy. <laughs> trust your gut is priceless. I love it, right? So that's what Cheryl says. Um, let's put some of these on there. And I think that they are just, um, please come out. Oh, there's Mary. Mary's my cluster girl. We, we always kid because Mary <laughs> wants to learn about clusters. And she said, please come back again, Dorothy. <laughs> and that wow. your process is so inspirational. And thank wow. you. Wow. Well, I'm glad. For I'm sharing glad. your talents with us. I hope you just soak it in. So I know what a treasure, right? You guys, I'm just so happy that, um, you could, you could join this and, and you guys, this was outside of Dorothy's comfort zone and she did it anyhow. (laughs) So I feel really blessed that you can, you could do that and share, you know, come on here and share with us. So well, I'm I'm quite happy. I'm thrilled that you invited me and you were very patient with me. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So, <laughs> yeah. And I th- I I think this was a great way to kind of mix both, you know, your process and talking through with a little bit of the technology. Let me handle that mm-hmm. on the back side <laughs> for yeah. you. Yeah. So, they are so thrilled and um Kathleen says, thanks for going out of your comfort zone for... Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm happy. I'm honored that anybody actually watched this, so I'm quite oh, thrilled. Oh, so yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, yes, if you have any last questions, let us know. Um, and uh, and they said, yeah, we'd never know that you were outside your, your comfort zone. And very, very nice video. So if you want, again... To see, you know, the finished layouts, you know, when the live stream is over, you can catch the replay. And then, of course, you can fast forward, rewind and, you know, just really watch what Dorothy's doing with those clusters. So (laughs) (laughs) make sure to do that if you need some more inspiration. I would love to have you come back again anytime you are welcome. (laughs) And uh, yeah, so if you if, (laughs) if that wasn't too bad for you. I'd love to have you back. No, no, I had fun. I actually, I enjoyed myself. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I wouldn't, I'm thrilled to have had the opportunity. So thank you very much for that. Yes. Thank you so much. So, um, let's, uh, again, just give Dorothy, um, a huge thank you. And, and everybody already has that. I mean, they're, they're just over the moon with your layout. So thanks so much. Oh, wow. That's great for that. Great. And um, okay. let me kind of pop in here. Oh, I did want to mention just to wrap up. If you missed Tidy Up Tuesday, this past Tuesday, we really dug into organizing your photos. And my favorite, favorite tip for that, which are those fun little folders people were asking about the photo folders. And so if you need a little tip on how to do that, you can watch the Tidy Up on my channel or on Facebook. And then also um, our next pop crop, let me put that up, will be May 13th. It is Mother's Day weekend, but it's the Saturday before the Sunday. So treat yourself and join me live for four hours of cropping at the pop crop on May 13th. And, uh, I think you'll be glad you did because then you can um, say, hey, I did something for me. (laughs) All right. So um, I'm so happy for all of you who I I know a lot of you are already, like I said, Dorothy fans. And then hopefully some new folks were able to just be amazed by this beautiful layout. And uh her Dorothy's uh, YouTube channel I put in the description so you can find it in Facebook in the description above or on YouTube in the description below so you can just click on that and then don't forget to subscribe if you want to find out when Dorothy's going to post new videos and actually maybe let me bring you back on screen just for a second are you okay if I sure yeah absolutely Um, you know, what I think is really fun is kind of letting people know how you, um, let's wrap up with 
how you go about your videos on your channel because you have different kind of things that you do. So just tell people like you have your um, stretch the sketch, right? You do stretch the sketch, right. you do your process videos and different things. Yeah. So basically I have um, right now there's about 400 videos on my channel, 277 process videos. Oh, and God. also the other ones I do, I basically start every month by sharing the material I'm going to mm -hmm. use for a month. And actually in May, that video will go up in a few days. One of my collections I use, I typically use between about four and seven collections a month. The first one I show that I'm going to use is the painted garden collection. <laughs> so if you want to see what else I do Ooh, with the painted garden collection, I do plan on playing with it in the month of May. And at the end of every month, I do a layout share. So I show everything I've created. Now on YouTube, I might create four layouts, but at the end of the month, typically I will share anywhere between 20 and 30 layouts at the end of the month. So at the end of May, you will get to see what else I created with Painted Gardens. So as a matter of fact, I am going to crop with a few friends tomorrow and I will be using Painted Garden tomorrow. Oh, fun, so, fun, fun. Yeah. So on my channel, I do process videos. I usually, I'll do some tips and tricks type videos. Mm -hmm. I will do my kit shares at the beginning of every month and layout shares. So that's kind of what I do. I'm usually on it honestly about six times six or seven times a month max on youtube it takes me a long time to create a video it takes me two it days is. It's to a lot of work. video yeah. Yeah. it's a lot of work i love it that's why i do it i share what i love to do but I don't have any more time than what I'm, I don't know how people, some people post like daily. I mean, I wouldn't be able to, I, I would need extra days in the week to do that. Right. More hours in the day so, and more days in the week for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I do what yeah. I can, but yeah. I, I am pretty consistent and regular. So as a matter of fact, on Sunday, I have a layout process video that's going up and Sunday night will be my layout share and Monday morning will be my May kit share. So I've got three videos coming up between Sunday and Monday this week. So, so. what that means is friends, you've got some binge watching to do. So. Yeah, there's, a, there's some stuff coming up on my channel. I was on vacation. I had a, a slow YouTube month in, in April because I was in Jamaica for 10 days. So, hey, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be fun. You can get all caught up and and share yeah. so oh my goodness all right well i hate to see you go but all right we are until the next time up Lauren. and just until next time that's what i love <laughs> thank okay, you so much good. Again. and well, thank um, you and thank all of you for watching me i'm, yeah. I'm thrilled yes thank you so much and for all of you out there don't forget um for now and in the future, always take a little time to craft your joy. And we'll see you next time. Two weeks. <laughs> okay. Bye for now. Thanks, Dorothy.